In 2013, she was thrust into the national limelight when her father, the Sultan of Sulu, revived a dispute between the Philippines and Malaysia by instigating an intrusion into the eastern part of Sabah in North Borneo, which the Sultanate claims to be renting out to the Malaysian government. As the eldest child of the late Sultan Jamalul Kiram III, she was the go-to person in their household and the defender of his legacy. Good evening, I'm Jean De Castro, standing in for Tony Abad, and this is Political Capital. With us this evening is Jaisal Kiram, a princess of Sulu and one of the opposition senatorial candidates. Good evening, Princess Jaisal. Good evening, Jean. Now tell us what really happened during the 2013 standoff in Lahad Datu. Well, it was not actually planned. The followers of my father had the intention of going to Lahad Datu way, way before 2013. But my father didn't allow them for the simple reason that he was thinking, my father was thinking that if they go to, to Sabah and if Malaysia will not treat them well, then maybe confusion or uh, well, chaos might happen, like what happened in the Lahad Datu. So my father instructed them to, oh, we, we just wait for the, the new administration. Because, well, I mean, in the Manhattan, that uh, during that time, we, we had hope that during the administration of Noy Noy Aquino, eh, this issue will be settled or will be tackled at least. But we wrote a letter when the when this president became the president of the you know sat as the president of this of this country, we wrote him a letter. But we heard in the news what happened to the letter. It was lost in the uh, bureaucratic maze. So, so what were you asking <coughs> for in that letter? It's a briefing to the president of what the Sultanate can do to help uh, in the government, specifically in dealing with the issue ng Sabah. Plus, our mandatory participation in the peace process. The Sultanate of Sulu plays a vital role in the peace process, specifically if we talk about Mindanao. But according to our president, nakakalungkot, that the letter was lost in a bureaucratic maze. So, so was that <clears throat> what triggered? the actual deployment the of people. people actually the followers of my father my father actually did not notice him did not give him a notice that they'll proceed to to lahat datu so when they called my father up they were there already in sabah and to the awe that they were not received well by malaysia instead of letting them just live in their own territory they were confronted by ground troops and airstrikes so out of the 235 men who went there, I think about 130 something lang who were able to make it up to this uh, up to this day, no? And dami hong namatay. But we still have also maybe 100 <clears throat> more Filipinos who are facing charges related to that incident. Actually, until now, crackdown continues and the maltreatment uh, the Filipinos are experiencing in their own territory uh, called North Borneo, but now termed Saba. Eh, Crackdown continues. As a matter of fact, I think it was just a year ago when there were two children who were poisoned by the special branch uh, or the police in Malaysia because they were hiding, because the police are everywhere doing crackdowns. So if you're a Filipino, specifically if you're a Taosug Filipino, you'll be brought to jail and no due process is done. So you're saying that it wasn't a deliberate decision on the part of the Sultanate to, to be able to deploy people over there. Now, given the <clears throat> consequences, is there regret? Actually, what happened was a wake-up call for every Filipino. It gave awareness to the Filipino people that this territory, Saba, is a Philippine territory. Therefore, we Filipinos must benefit from it, not, not foreigners, not Malaysia, but we know for a fact that it contributes a lot to the economy, economy of Malaysia. So I think it's, uh, it, it, this is a very difficult task to begin with this, because we are faced with a very, uh, it's a big issue, not just national. It, it, this is not a, just a national issue, but international at that. But what we need is a government for the Filipinos and not a government that will defend um, foreigners or the land grabbers to not, not protecting 
the interest of its people. So, nakakalungkot because in 2013, we saw that it was so clear that it was not our interest. It was not the Filipinos' interest who were protected by the government. After that incident, a few months after that incident, your father passed away. Yeah. At that time, did he anoint you as his successor? <laughs> you were the spokesperson during that time. Well, I was the spokesperson for Sultan Jamal al Kiram, my father. Palagi kong sinasabi that tawag lang ng pagkakataon. I'm not. We have a spokesperson in the in the Kiram family in the Sultanate of Sulu, but because of that incident, wala naman kami mga staff to begin with. So I volunteered to be to aid my father in his fight, like in in this battle, in the Lahad Datu standoff. So. Uh, my task was just to drive him and to just, you know, to aid him. But tawag ng pagkakataon, then I be became his spokesperson. Yeah, before he died, he made habilen to my mother. Three things. Number one is that for the unity of the family. Uh, number two is to protect the people of the Sultanate of Sulu and to continue the fight. This issue is not new in the Philippines. No? This issue was an issue way, way back, but nothing is happening. And my father was offered a huge amount of money in the past just to drop the claim, but he did not do it because he believes that Saba is not just for the Kirams. The Kirams have a, has a very big responsibility because they are the administrator of this property. They, they have to make sure that this Saba, it is the people who will benefit from this property, and not just Kiram alone, because it was given by the Sultanate of Sulu, of uh, Brunei to the Sultanate of Sulu as a token of gratitude when the Sultan of Sulu assisted uh, Brunei to quell rebellion in Brunei. Now, you mentioned the lack of support from President Aquino. Now, President Aquino blamed the Sultanate for dragging mm -hmm. the Philippine government into this dispute and endangering the lives of OWs. Your reaction? Oh, well, it, if you look back and if you... Um, Try to Google what happened in uh, 2013 in Lahad Datu. Matagal naman na endangered ang mga Filipino in Saba. Every day, they are threatened by what will happen to them because they are not treated well in Saba. They are not even treated as a human being. Filipinos in their own territory in North Bruneo, now called Saba, is maltreated. So every day, they, they are facing danger in Saba. Now, during this time, you also spoke on national television and called out um, then the ILG Secretary Mar Rojas and said that he was acting more like a Malaysian spokesperson. Well, because he was a DL, DILG Secretary, not even a DFA Secretary. So what does he has to do with the claim or the issue in Saba when it involves uh, DFA? It, it's, it's an international issue. It's not confined in one local government. So, and, and, and besides, if you hear him talk, it's as if he is a spokesperson for Malaysia for calling my father or the Kirams as matigas ang ulo because they're following the dictate of Malaysia to send back those people to the Philippines. When we come back, Princess Jaisal's views on Bangsamoro autonomy and the rise of Islamic fundamentalism. Stay with us. You're back on Political Capital, and I'm Jean De Castro, together with our guest, Princess Jaisal Kiram. Now, Princess Jaisal, what do you feel about the non-passage of the Bangsamoro Basic Law? Oh, it was actually a relief, because I, I see danger in that. Una, this BBL facilitator is who? Malaysia is behind this. So first things first, if Malaysia really wants to contribute peace uh, in this country, specifically in Mindanao, First things first, we have to sit down and talk about our issue, our dispute, yung Saba claim. So, kita na interest agad eh. This BBL is not for the Filipinos. This BBL, I think, and I see it, I'm sure, not I think, is a cover to our claim over the territory of Saba. Now, what's the alternative then? I want everybody to know that uh, Princess Jaisal Kiram supports all peace process. Yung totoo lang, yung genuine peace process. Maganda, the intention of the BBL is good. Well, yung for the, Filip yung for the stakeholders of the Philippines, ha? what it wanted is to give peace in Mindanao. What I see is that if a 
a peace process is to be passed for Mindanao's development, dapat lahat ng stakeholders consulted and the genuine stakeholders, not just a stakeholder or a group that was created by this Razak Aquino BBL. So when you talk about genuine stakeholders, who were those stakeholders that were left out of these peace talks? Well, they said everyone was consulted. Even the Sultanate of Sulu was consulted. I am from the Sultanate of Sulu. Well, when they said that uh, the Sultanate of Sulu was consulted, it was not people from the Sultanate of Sulu who attended that consultation meeting. So when you're saying that people were left out, you're also looking at the Sultanate that was not included in the peace talks. Oh, not so. just the Sultanate. Uh, to include the MNLF, they even created the MNLF of their own. When, ang gulo nga eh. Uh, kaya nga sinasabi ko, this I think is not genuine, uh, not genuine consultation. Not genuine stakeholders were consulted. Kasi they created their own. They adopted the same name, but the people who attended it, the members of it, are not really from that organization or th doesn't really belong to that uh, ko group. So you understand the Sultanate was also, also complained that they were not included in the peace talks. What role do you see the Sultanate playing here? What role should it play? Well, the history of the Sultanate of Sulu is vital in crafting this process for peace in Mindanao. Because I think we are dealing with one, with one group only in this BBL, uh, and that is the MILF. We have to understand the history of the MILF. For us to be able to under, understand the history of this group, we have to understand also where it came from. So it came from the MNLF. We have to understand the history of the MNLF. How was it created? So it all boils down to the Saba issue, to the Saba claim. When uh, when the plan of Marcus then failed, then it started the rise of uh, this group named MNLF. They are trying to uh, not talk about the Saba issue and they said in the BBL, it's not included. So how can you not include this very important issue that started, every, that started all the conflicts in Mindanao? But wasn't the MNLF or the ones that Nur Miswari wanted was really to do away with hierarchies or royalties in Mindanao. Yeah, in the past, I heard of that. Uh, nakakalungkot yun. But um, I think bumawi naman si Chairman Miswari. When the Lahad Datu uh, standoff happened, he went to the house and he spoke with my father. And he showed support that he is behind, he and his group is behind the Sultanate of Sulu in getting this territory back for the Filipinos. Now you mentioned that the issue of Saba cannot be separated from the peace talks in Mindanao, but will not that only threaten further the possibility of peace in Mindanao? Well, the issue on Saba is, uh, is an international issue, so it has to be um, dealt with diplomatically. Kailangan yun eh. Diplomacy is very important. So what we need for a government to do is just to ask Malaysia to sit down, talk about the issue, and come up with a win-win solution for their people and for our people. And in that way, I think it's the best thing to do if you want peace in Mindanao, eh? because all the people in Mindanao, uh, specifically in the, uh, well, the Taosugs, no, who knows the history of Saba, and for all those who know the history of Saba, ang laki ng magagawa nito for bringing peace in Mindanao. So you were not happy with how the Aquino administration handled this? Of course not. Now, <laughs> you're running under the slate of Vice President Binay. Do you think he will support what you want in terms of the Saba issue? I really have no plans to go into politics, not until the Vice President asked me to join him. What made me said yes, he, he brought up the issue of Saba. He told me that, don't you think, Iha, this will be a very good avenue for you to advance your advocacy? to the Filipino people. Because if the Filipinos are aware of this, eh, na to. We have the insurgency problem in Mindanao and the peace talks, the BBL was seen as a solution to that. What's your alternative? What's an other solution to the insurgency in Mindanao? Well, again, the solution is to, to restudy their history so that they could come up with a real solution knowing the real problem. But you've problem looked at, but you've been very vocal about history. In fact, you've studied it. You've been invited to talks to different schools. What then do you see as a solution from what you know from our history? Well, history plays a vital role. 
So, making people aware, I think, mahabang proseso to eh. Kasi, uh, in our educational system, the history books that we use, eh, ang konti lang about the history of uh, what were we before 1521. And ang sinasabi nga, mang-mang tayo. Eh, hindi naman yung totoo. So, for the people who makes or is are involved in the peace process, they have to re-study their history very well. Because, uh, I think, to give a solution to a fake problem, consider mo na rin yung solusyon na yun as fake. So, if you re-study history, matutukoy mo. You go to the bottom of the history of every groups in Mindanao, then you'll see what what transpired? Why did this group emerge? So you're saying that what we have right now is actually a fake problem? It's, it's all a fake problem. And the one behind this is Malaysia. The one who supported MNLF is Malaysia to go against this government. Tapos ito naman ang gobyerno, kakausapin sila for the peace process. The one who supported MILF is again Malaysia. And here is MILF uh, facing... Uh, faced by the peace process for this solution for Mindanao called the BBL. But in the two insurgent groups considered, no, Malaysia is behind those two groups. So, ano bang interest ng Malaysia? I think one solution nga would be, wag nang makialam ang Malaysia in Mindanao. Then maybe we could come up with a real, real peace process for Mindanao. If we're going to take a strong position against Malaysia, and right now we're, all, we're also in a precarious situation with China, won't that only hamper economic development and foreign relations? Again, this all boils down to history. In dealing with China, the Sultanate of Sulu plays a vital role. If we re-study the Sultanate of Sulu, uh, sinasabi ko nga sa'yo kanina, in Shandong province, there was a tomb of the Sultan of Sulu. This is an evidence that the Sultanate of Sulu and China has a very good diplomatic relations in the past, and even trade relations. So, Historically, we have very good relations with China. So when I was doing my thesis in college, that was my question in, uh, in mind. Na why the Sultanate of Sulu is not being used by our government to, uh, to enhance diplomatic relations with China? And sa halip, ano tayo ang liit -liit? hello in away natin ang China. Uh, when, we, when we had a very good relationship in the, uh, with China in the past, then we could have a good relationship with China so at the what, moment, why do you think is Islamic fundamentalism on the rise? Because of poverty, then they could they, they could easily be recruited. But if we understand Islam, Hindi, I do not think they're still. Cons I, I I am not considering them as Islam anymore, because Islam is a religion of peace. So ibig sabihin kapag peace ang pinaniniwalaan mo, eh peaceful ka na tao. So, you condemn all killings, specifically mga innocent people na namamatay and because of their, I don't know what, what they want, but, uh, but How I think... How do we address that with, uh, with news that there are some groups already rising in Mindanao supporting this cause? I think, though, for, for the Muslims in the Philippines, you just hold on to your belief and it will, it will lead you to the right path. But killing specifically the innocent people is a no-no in Islam. We have now also the brewing conflict between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Will this lead to another um, Arab Spring or World <laughs> War III? Well, if everyone just practices their religion and, you know, just follow what uh, the teachings of their religions are, I don't think there would be chaos in the world. Because I'm a Muslim, eh. and as far as I know, Kahit nga yung mag-agrabyado ka ng tao or you lie kahit kaunti is so bawal in Islam eh. Hindi, hindi, kaya parang I cannot imagine them being, I cannot see them as Muslims, as, as, as believers of Islam. If, if they uh, commit everything that is un-Islamic. After the break, a member of Sulu royalty campaigns for the Senate. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're with Political Capital. Princess Jaisal, it has been 20 years since Senator Santanina Rizul ended her two terms as the first Filipino Muslim in the Senate. 
what are your chances of succeeding her? Oh, well, because of the issue I carry, um, I, I think I have a big chance. If every Filipino will know that what I'm fighting for is for the Filipino. Kasi sino ba naman ang Filipino na gustong ipamigay ang teritoryo niya? At sino ba naman ang Pilipino na gugustuhin ang nakikinabang sa teritoryo niya ay dayuhan? Now, a one quick sentence each on your position. What is your stand on the Freedom of Information Bill? Well, it's very good for, um, well, dapat lang with accountability. How about the Anti-Dynasty Bill? Well, Anti-Dynasty Bill, um, ang meron lang naman in our Constitution for you to be eligible for a post is for you to be able to read and write. But if you can deliver and if you know for a fact that you have the skills and kakayahan to be in a public post, then why not? Economic charter change? Well, yes, I agree to that. You agree to opening up yes, the constitutional yes, restrictions yes. to foreign ownership? Yes. How about tax reform? Yes, dapat. What kind of tax reform would you be looking at? Well, uh, tax reforms are... Dapat naman talaga the taxes, uh, i-lower ang taxes for the, for the people. Because, and uh, they have to look into other businesses that they could tax uh, more. And, but for the majority, or yung, kung saan yung, yung, uh, well, yung mga laborers natin, we know for a fact that tayo, diba, ang lalaki ng taxes natin, eh, dapat, dapat talaga i-lower ang taxes. What would be your proposed solution to address traffic congestion? A public transportation. Enhance public transportation like the railways, uh, in the buses, I think. We enhance it. Corruption in government? Sad. How would you aim to address it? Well, by not uh, being involved in it. Uh, if I, you know, if... Well, I'm in, in, I'm in politics now, but by not involving myself in it, uh, so maybe I could influence other uh, political leaders of not doing the same. But, uh, well, address it, kailangan may check and balance talaga in the government. Now, describe the following presidentials in one to three words only. One to three words. Binay. Gaganda ang buhay. Duterte. Ano ba Ang tapang. Po. The lady in white. Rojas. Spokesperson for Malaysia. Santiago. Expert in law. Thank you, Princess Jaisal Kiran, for joining Gina, us. Thank you. This is Jean De Castro standing in for Tony Abad. Thank you, and Political Capital will be back next Wednesday.